Hi friends, if you are watching this video by accident or it somehow turned out to be in your recommended ones, I will say that my channel is dedicated to electronics and maybe much that will be said below will seem to you a dark matter, but I guarantee that it will be interesting. We will make the eternal matches, well, maybe not quite eternal. Such things are sealed container with a combustible mixture inside and flint. In general, it's a hybrid of lighters and matches. It's obvious they are not eternal and the combustible mixture will end sooner or later and the rest of the components will eventually become unusable. All the mesh and components that you need to build this device you can buy in online stores. And in order to make the right choice, the browser extension Alitools will help you. It will show you the customer reviews, help you track the dynamics of price changes, and most importantly, it will also help you to track all the packages directly from the extension. The link is in the description under the video. But we are electronic fans, so we don't really care about mechanical primitive technologies. We will make our electronic version. Our version of electric arc or plasma eternal lighter consists of a power source, a high voltage, voltage converter and a solar module as a battery charging unit. The converter increases the voltage from the battery to several thousand volts. At the output we have a high voltage, high frequency arc which is very hot, capable of melting even the copper wires through which it flows, so that it can easily ignite everything. We need any dead computer power supply or other power sources in which we could find a pulse transformer, for example from a DVD or a printer. The transformer will be the basis of everything. On its base the boost converter is built. My transformer is taken from the non-working computer power supply unit. It is desirable that it be such, like mine, of an elongated type. It's easier to wind. Next, the transformer needs to be dismantled. The ferret core consists of two halves that are glued together. Gently heat the core with a soldering iron for 5 to 10 minutes. The glue will loosen and the halves can be disconnected. In the description you can find a link to the video where I show the simple methods of disassembling pulse transformers. Pay attention that the halves have a gap in the center. Taking into account the circuit of the inverter which I intended to use, such a non-magnetic gap is ideally needed, but the circuit will work without a gap too. After dismounting the core halves, it is necessary to remove all the factory windings, leaving only the bare skeleton. Now let's wind the primary winding. For this purpose, I took the wire of 0.5 mm and folded it twice. In principle, the diameter of the wire can be from 0.2 to 0.8 mm. Optimal is 0.4 to 0.7 mm. Make 8 turns and output the second end of the wire as shown in the video. Isolate winding with several layers of fluoroplastic tape or ordinary transparent tape. Both options are equally good. Next, take a thin wire. I took it from the coil of a 12 volt relay. Such a wire can be found even in the wall clock or just buy it. It is very thin. The caliber shows 0.05 mm. This wire we must solder to the stranded wire. In my case, it's a flexible high voltage wire in fairly thick insulation. The place of soldering is insulated by heat shrink tube and fixed with a hot melt glue to prevent accidentally tear it off during winding. Let's begin winding, but I can't make as good as this Chinese woman. Just try to be accurate and careful. Winding is done in rows, each row of 100 to 120 turns, then again several layers of insulation. The wire isn't cut, it goes with insulation. The principle of winding is simple. For example, the first row was wound from left to right, the second from right to left and so on. The total number of turns and winding must be about 1200, so we must do from 10 to 12 layers. At the end of winding, a multi-stranded high voltage wire was soldered to it. Isolate with heat shrink tube. In general, do same what we did at the beginning. Then fix all this with several layers of transparent tape and collect the transformer halves. They are additionally fixed with heat resistant adhesive tape. Someone will ask, what if the wire will tear? If it happened, you must gently solder them and for this layer, put the insulation twice as much as usual. Now let's go back to the primary winding. It consists of two separate wires that are wound together. 
They need to be phased in order to get the middle point according to the circuit. You just need to connect wires, same way as shown in the photo. If you have watched until this minute, I congratulate you for your patience. And I'm amazed at my own patience, since it takes several hours to wind these transformers manually. The resistance of the secondary winding is around 320 ohm, and the inductance of 139 millihenry. Inductance of the primary winding is 2.2 microhenry. So, 90% of the work is completed. Now collect everything according to the circuit and connect it to the power source, for example, to 3.7 volt lithium ion battery. The arc is formed at a distance of 0.5 to 0.8 mm and could stretch up to 1.5 cm. If we raise the supply voltage, then we can improve these parameters, but we shouldn't take any risks, especially if you had wound the transformer for the first time. Let's try the ability of the arc. Now about the other parts of the lighter. At first I wanted to use an ionister or supercapacitor as a power source. They are for 2.7 volt. The capacity could be different. My sample is as much as 100 farads. If we use field effect transistors with a lower operating voltage, then the ionister will feed as a power source. It has a long service life, but its charge was sufficient only for 10 seconds of continuous operation of the lighter. So, it was decided to use a well-known lithium-ion accumulator, which has a high energy intensity, low self-discharge, and a rather long service life. At hand I have an accumulator of the 14500 standard. Its size is like a regular finger battery, but the voltage is as much as 3.7 volts. The accumulator will never be discharged because it is recharged by a solar battery made of amorphous silicon. Why exactly amorphous silicon? Unlike mono and polycrystalline models, amorphous silicon can produce electricity literally at night. The slightest light source will suffice to produce a little current. The solar module produces 5 volts. The current is negligible, so it is impossible to overcharge and damage accumulator. But anyway, the charge goes through a simple stabilizer circuit and a diode, so that the current from the accumulator couldn't flow in the opposite direction, to the solar module. The battery is fragile and needs to be filled with something transparent, for example resin or a transparent sealant. The circuit is started by a fixed switch. You can use both a switch and a button without fixing to minimize the undesired switching of the circuit, say in your pocket. But I limited myself to one switch and still got a pretty nasty electric shock and a burn right during the filming. In fact, it happens very often. However, such moments remain behind the scenes. Of course, for a couple of dollars you can buy a ready high voltage converter for assembly of which I spent several hours. By the way, the Chinese also sell arc lighters too. The link to these things you can find in the description. Friends, I hope this video will help you in particular with the winding of high voltage transformers, since the main purpose of this video was to show you the process of manual winding of such transformers. Please don't forget to rate this video and share it with your friends if it was useful. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.